up another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. If you frequent this website, you know the last few weeks we've been doing the cars of SEMA, these thousand horsepower resto mods and all kinds of cool stuff. The new Shelby 350R Mustang, the new Audi, the new NSX Acura. I thought we'd slow it down a little bit with an old friend. This is my 1931 Indian 101 Scout. This is one of the great American motorcycles. Uh, the 101 Scout was a revolutionary bike only because it was light, it handled, it had a low center of gravity, it only weighed about 370 pounds. It's 45 cubic inches, which is about 750 cc's. Now there was one above this, that was the Chief, that was the big model. But this is the one that people just kind of fell in love with because it was easy to ride, it's the best bike I've ever ridden for cow trailing. You know, it's getting on a dirt road and put it in second gear and just kind of crawling along and, you know, enjoying the view. This is the car they used, the car. This is the bike they used, rather, when you see those wall of death guys, when they, you know, when they take a motorcycle around a, a circular board track and get the thing going this way, it was the 101 Scout. Just because they were reliable and they were the best handling motorcycle you could get, you could get back in the day. Uh, of course, Harleys and Excelsior and a lot of these other motorcycles had overhead valves. But there's a man named Charles Franklin. He was an Irishman and he came to America, I think, about 1916. He got quite famous in Ireland for racing motorcycles and he became sort of Ireland's motorcycle man. Uh, he, Indian heard about him and they got him riding Indians over there and when he won quite a few races, they brought him to America and eventually became the chief engineer of Indian and designed the 101 Scout. His real genius was that he was able to get power out of these old flathead style engines and beat the overhead valve engines. You know, back in the day, uh, overhead valve engines were always superior, especially in racing, to flathead engines. But because of metallurgy and things of that nature, valves would break, they weren't as reliable. And Franklin, through porting and polishing and tuning, he got these not only to be the equal of the Harley 8 valve racer or Excelsior or any of those, but to actually beat them and win races. It was, it was pretty amazing. Uh, this was really one of the most legendary motorcycles of all time. This is the one bike that Harley was a little scared of back in the day because it was just right the first time right out of the box. Had all kinds of interesting features on it. For example, let me show you this here. As I said, it's 750 cc's, two camshafts, one for each cylinder, and each camshaft had only one lobe, the cam doing double duty both the intake and the exhaust valve on each cylinder. They had a bell crank valve that operated it, and the front cylinder cam gear spun a, tr there were three gears in here, and the third gear turning a magneto. And the really cool thing about these motors were, uh, well, other motorcycles had a, a chain drive driving the primary, which you had to adjust and, and, and would get out of alignment and all that kind of stuff. These were all gear driven. There were more expensive engines to produce, certainly, because of the gear driven. They might have been a little noisier, but they lasted the life of the motorcycle. That was a great thing about the Indian Scout. They used to say, you'll never wear out an Indian Scout. That was because you almost couldn't break these bikes. They were so reliable. It's not that they were the fastest bike of the day, they certainly weren't, but they won the most races because they were most reliable, especially anything over 100 or 200 miles. These could really go the distance. It's a three speed. You have a foot clutch or suicide clutch, as they used to call it. The bike originally had a left hand uh, throttle. I converted it to right hand because every, you know, you get used to riding so many bikes, and you go, what the hell? And next thing you know, you know. So I just converted it to, to right-hand uh, to right hand uh, throttle, just so I didn't kill myself. Um, it's a total loss oiling system. You fill this tank up here with oil. Uh, when you're on the highway, you want to give it a little extra, you, this is a hand pump, you can shoot an extra dollop of oil into the cylinder. Um, the 31s, I believe, had a, uh, had the, an oil pump connected to the throttle, so the more you open the throttle, the more oil it pumped. But those got messy and they pumped too much oil. Most people disconnected them, as we did on this bike here. Uh, if you're a real Indian purist, you'll notice it doesn't have the original carburetor. 
we put a different carburetor on it just because it works better. I mean, it's period correct, but it's, it's a modification people made back in the day. But other than that, it's pretty much exactly as it was. I haven't painted this. I really haven't done anything to it in 30 years. Uh, I've just ridden it. And about uh, a couple years ago, I called my friend Mike Thomas at uh, Kiwi Indian uh, down in Riverside, California. And I said, hey, this bike's getting a little tired. Can you go through it for me? Which he did. He put some pistons in it and cleaned it up. And it runs like a brand new bike. I never wanted to touch the patina of it. I like it. It just looks like a nice, original old girl. You know, sometimes you make these things so shiny, nobody wants to ride them anymore. So you got the head, it's all, you know, I didn't want to repaint everything because then once you go down that road, then you, then you do every nut and bolt and then pretty soon you don't want to take it out because it's too nice. So I liked using it just the way it is. It even has this original spotlight that came with it when it was new. Here's your speedometer here. You see we rode in there, did not exceed 40 miles an hour until he hit 26,500 miles. Uh, because I want to put a good 500 to 1,000 miles on this thing before I really open it up. You know, we just put the new pistons and everything in it, so that's to keep me honest. And you see, it's got the famous telltales. See the red line there? That followed your speedometer. And when a cop chased you, he would chase you. If you said, I wasn't going 50, he'd bring you back and show you the needle. And see, that's how fast I had to go to catch you. This is your air meter here, charge and discharge. This is your key. This works your headlights. This is gas tank. A lot of people want to know what this is. They get an old bike, they go, hey, what does this do? Well, what this does is this, you sort of suck some gas up. And when the bike was cold, you'd squirt that directly in the carburetor to prime it. This one is filled with oil. As I said, it's a total loss system. You fill the tank up with oil. You got probably maybe 150 miles on a quart of oil, something like that. This was your a hand pump. If you're doing high speed work, you'd shoot a couple of dollops of oil into the cylinder just to make sure it, everything stayed lubricated. This is your three speed gear shift here. Uh, this is your foot clutch on this side. See, you press that on. That's your clutch there. Clutch. As you can see, this carburetor here is, uh, if you're an Indian guy, you know that's not the correct carburetor, but uh, it's the one that works best for me on this one. You can see the prime is actually down, not up. That's the, how you can tell it's a wrong carburetor. Uh, this here is your, uh, normally this would be a high-low beam. I just converted it to an on-off kill switch because uh, you're really a high beam. You're not going to blind anybody with these lights. And this is your advance and retard on your ignition. And this is your hand throttle here. Uh, this is your front brake. The 101 Scout was probably the, had the best front brake of any Indian, at least up to that point. You could actually stop with the front brake, which was unusual, because most motorcycles you couldn't. Um, and you got a little light here. This, this light lights up this dash area, lights up your speedometer, so you can see at night. Really comfortable saddle. And you got a luggage rack back here, a little tool chest. You can carry extra plugs and things like that. So it's a very sophisticated, neat little package. You know, we all go crazy for the... Uh, fancy English and European motorcycles, whereas these things, not only were they real workhorses, but they were sophisticated. You know, like that uh, gear-driven primary, that's pretty cool. That's, that's nicely done. You never have to mess with that. And these were reliable. You know, you could go 20,000 miles before you had to pull the head off one of these and do any kind of work to it, uh, which doesn't sound like much now, but back in the day, that was a lot. I can remember uh, looking at Triumph motorcycles in the 60s and the salesman telling me, you know, you don't have to take the head off this thing to about 7,500 miles. Really? Wow. That's unbelievable. I don't have to take the whole thing apart until it's 7,000 miles? Wow. So there it is. Uh, it's your horn. As I said, front brake. If you'd like to know more, this is a book called Franklin's Indians. It's about Charles Franklin. Uh, Harry Sutcher, these guys. These guys that write these books, <laughs> they, they don't get rich. You don't sell a million copies of a book on Indian Scout motorcycles. But I'm so grateful the guys that write these things because they save all this history. I mean, there's an illustration in the book here of how the primary works on the early Scout. You see that? Okay, see? Nice gear-driven unit there. Way more sophisticated than a lot of the European or Italian motorcycles of the period. Um, and this book is filled with all kinds of Great period pictures.
The thing that really killed motorcycling in America was the Model T. I mean, a bike like this was over $300, and Model T was $260. Why would you buy this with a sidecar when you could get an automobile that you could take your whole family out in? England motorcycling uh, was more popular because people couldn't afford automobiles. But it, it's all in this great book. It's, it's really terrific. It's called Franklin's Indians. I, I have no part of this book. I, I, it's not like I got a financial interest in it. But if you enjoy reading about the early history of American motorcycles, especially how they did in Europe, you know, these won the Isle of Man, I think, in uh, 11 or 10, something like that. They came in like one, two, three, four. I mean, it, it was really impressive. American motorcycles, uh, you know, we tend now to think of them as a little old-fashioned, but in the turn of the century, the Indian even had an electric start model in the teens, which was really, really rare. It wasn't real successful, but it shows you how uh, ahead of the time they were. Um, but listen, let me put this book down, and we'll uh, take this thing for a ride. I see now the engine's cold, so I'm going to turn on the fuel. Now, you don't have to tickle these like you do uh, British carburetors, but you might want to put your choke on or your prime and maybe give it one or two kicks just to pull some fuel into the cylinder. Just like that. Okay. Open that up. Adjust your spark a little bit. Let's see what happens. As you can see, very sweet running bike. And being a 750, you don't break your leg trying to kick it. Just kind of drop your foot through when she starts. I'm not sure what the compression ratio is on this. Probably six and a half, something like that. So it's easy to start, runs cool. I'm going to put my jacket on. We'll take it for a ride. Modern bikes have gotten so fast that anything less than 100 seems boring. Whereas this, 45, 50, 55, that's eh, kind of a nice cruising speed. You get to take in the smells and the sounds and the things that are happening around you. When you come to a light, you can keep it in gear and then you just let out the clutch. on a motorcycle. So old school. There's a lot of stuff for your hands and feet to do. You're adjusting the throttle, you got your spark advance, got your foot clutch, you got your hand shift. exported motorcycles all over the world, much more so than Harley-Davidson back in the day. Indians were huge in Europe and in England. In fact, the bikes are so good, the English actually put tariffs on them because it's hurting their home market.
even a lot of British uh, twins from the 60s, you couldn't even see in the rearview mirror because they vibrated so much, whereas this thing is still pretty clear. This is exactly the kind of road this machine likes, a fast two-lane B road. And you know, with this sprung seat, you don't really miss the uh, suspension at all. The hardtail's fine, unless you hit a really big bump. Oh my God. fun this thing is. You know, this is just classic motorcycling at its best. Big old reliable engine, magneto, no battery, don't need any of that. Although it has a battery, it's electric lights. Just one of the great, great bikes of all time. I know this episode was a little slower than some of the other ones we do, but sometimes it's nice to go slow and just uh, take in the sights around you. I'm gonna go ride some more. See you guys next week.